Oh, good morning, good morning, you fabulous people. I hope it's not too echoey, because I am in a different room of the house today. But I hope we are well. If you are watching live, please jump in the comments and say good morning to me. If you are watching on replay, please put hashtag replay in the comments so I know that you are stalking me, because I really like to know. And welcome to the business show by Quack TV, because why watch Quack TV where you can watch Quack TV? With me, Cal McKay. So yes, it is day two of season two. And what a fabulous lineup I've had this week and got this week. I've already had Paul Wilkinson on the show yesterday, and today I've got the one and only Jack Hickey, who is a number one best-selling author on Amazon, newly best-selling author on Amazon. So this is going to be absolutely amazing. I can't wait to bring him on the show late, later, recently. I can't get my freaking words out. You know what I'm like on this bloody show, people. But yes, hope we are all well. Honestly, I love doing this show, and the reason why is because it gets me into a routine. Don't know if everyone else is the same or got the same premise in a morning, like if you have a certain thing you have to do. And I didn't realise when starting the show how good this was for getting me into a routine and it really bettered my kind of business life. Yeah, I'm just going to talk real randomly for about three, five minutes. Why not? So it really helped me sort talk my business life, getting into that routine in the morning where it's actually like, oh, oh, okay, I could actually do this. And the reason why it was that discipline there. So even being a business coach myself, I needed that discipline there to be able to sort people out, but also sort myself out. And doing that was getting the show and starting the show and starting on that premise. And it was really, really cool for actually doing that. And I know there's a lot of other people that do live shows and podcasts and things like that. But if you look at your diary, don't get me wrong, I'm a night owl. I'm, I, I love the concept of getting up early in the morning. Absolutely love the concept of it. Well, I do, unless I'm hungover then we don't really talk about that. But yes, I love getting up early in the morning, and but it's, I find it hard to do, which is why I absolutely love doing the show, because it's my first thing. So my thing what I want to leave with you guys is kind of, if you want to get up earlier in the morning, is it me or have you got to do it if you book something in for that time? Like a client, or a show, or a meeting, or whatever. If you book something in earlier in the morning, you will get up to do it, especially when you're self-employed or in business, because you really, really will. So yes, yeah, so if you are jumping in live, Please jump in the comments and say hello to me. Say good morning before I bring on my guest very, very shortly. The one and only Mr. Jack Hickey. Um, new author, best-selling author on dating and relationships. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say there's probably a bit of sex in there too. I'm just I'm just presuming. I'm really just going to say it. I'll find out when I bring him on the show very shortly. But yes, if you are watching live, like I said, jump in the comments. And remember, you can watch every single one of my replays from season one on YouTube, which is up here. No, up that way. Switch sides now. There. Uh, which is at Quack Talks. And make sure you go and check all of them out because it will be absolutely amazing to get a few more subscribers on there. I won't lie. One of the things I'm going to shame, shamefully plug this morning is Quack Academy, which is my £10 business support group per month. I wouldn't normally do an advert in the middle of the show. However, it is going from strength to strength and we've got our workshops booked up and everything like that. So our next workshop is LinkedIn Profile Optimization with the one and only Mr. Jay Unwin. If people don't know who Jay is, you've been living under a rock. Trust me, you want to know who Jay is because he is absolutely bloody fabulous. So yes, so today's guest who I'm about to bring on very, very shortly is, I hope he's ready because I'm about to bring him on and I hope our internet connections are good because we did have a couple of issues this morning, is the one and only Mr. Jack Hickey who is a public relations and marketing expert and is going to show us the ropes on building attraction and how to build how to be your best self. I should be able to read. He's bringing together over 15 years of experience in dating and research, and Jack's book will take you all the way from before you meet a woman to building traction. And let's be honest, me talking to someone about attracting a woman is definitely going to be a very good conversation. Um, then closing the deal and even giving you game-changing advice on sex itself. This is going to be a barrel of laughs because you've got a gay man talking about dating women. This is going to be fun. I really can't wait for it. So with no further ado, I'm about to bring on um, the one best on Alpha on Amazon, the one and only Mr. Jack Hickey. Good morning, kind sir. Good morning, Callum. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. At least it stopped raining. You know, we were scheduled for a lot of rain all week, so I'm pretty glad that stopped, to be honest. Yeah, so am I. So am I. So first of all, let's both hope that our internet holds up because we had a couple of issues <laughs> to begin with. So we'll probably power through. We'll probably power through. But Jack, just before we carry on, can you just tell us a bit about you and, and what you do? Of course I can. So uh, I'm Jack Hickey. I've just written uh, my first book, which is called Getting the Girl. It went to number one on Amazon. Uh, it also went to number two on Kindle, which is obviously the electronic version there in, in numerous categories, right from psychological training to online dating. So I was quite fortunate that it ranked in lots of different categories. Uh, the book was sort of a culmination of having too much time on my hands during lockdown and actually sort of 
pulling together lots of things that I've discovered over the years and sort of putting it all together in one place. And it was really enjoyable writing. And most people that have read it obviously really enjoyed it. So uh, I've been really happy with it. And in the day job, I do public relations and marketing for sort of large corporate clients, your your Red Bulls, your Cadbury's, your Skies, the, the BBC, those sort of people. So it was sort of taking the skills I use on a day-to-day -day basis, sort of representing the best version of yourself from a company standpoint to a personal standpoint. Because at the end of the day, as you know, you are your own personal brand. Oh, so true. It's literally, I'm drinking out of a rhinestone rubber duck cup because that's <laughs> branded. Like, honestly, and it, on, on that, personally made for me, that's on brand. But no, that's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to just put it in one nutshell of a dating advice book. It's easier than absolutely. saying everything that you've been telling. So, okay. How, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 29 now. Right. So tw I'm 25, right? So you're 29 and you've wrote, written, uh, or wrote, so I don't speak proper English myself, <laughs> and you've wrote a book on dating. Let's backtrack. What yeah. led you up to the point of wanting to write that book and doing the research and looking at actually like the dating and everything like that? And, you know, it, even like the sex to go in it and things like that, because I'm going to be real scandalous. I'm going to be like, it's the personal experiences in there. Like, you know, what's I, I want all the gossip. So what, what got you up to that point of writing the book? Why? What made you want to write that book? So I'd say, um, like every young boy, when you hit teenage years, your obsession mm -hmm. becomes women. Um, yeah. For most boys, not everyone, Callum, but for, for a lot of yeah, boys, no, yeah. I know, yeah, I know what you mean, don't worry, yeah. Was, was the thrill of the chase, do you know what I mean? There was, there was women out there that you found attractive, and like most men, you hopelessly sort of stumble around, and you have no sort of plan, and you're like, oh, that worked, and, and this didn't work. And most people spend the next 10, 20 years hoping to get lucky, as we call it, because they haven't got a clue what works. They just did one thing once, and the woman said yes, and they was like, oh, brilliant, I'll just keep doing that for the rest of my life. So when I was a teenager way back when, the only stuff around dating was – quite sleazy to be honest there was a, a big sort of seduction community it was called and if you go back in the the late 90s it was all around pickup artists and pickup artists were these sort of subset group of uh beta males that were so terrified of women they had these canned openers and these sort of fake rehearsed lines that they would run in order to build false attraction with a woman with the only aim of to get them into bed and um, Neil Strauss wrote a book on it called The Game and it was a, a number one bestseller and Neil Strauss was a journalist and basically he travelled around this pickup artist community for about 15 mm -hmm. years and wrote this big expose and that sort of brought it to the mainstream yeah no see that's so then, interesting it, mm -hmm. it, it is so interesting isn't it like the fact that a lot of people, I think, that don't or never really understood pickup artists actually exist. It wasn't until they watched, um, I can't remember the name of the film with Will Smith, because he was one, wasn't he? And he helped men, men out in that film. Pitch. Um, it'll come Pitch, yeah. yeah. So it, it's so important. But yeah, carry on. Yeah, so so Hitch, um, Will Smith, obviously in that film, he steals a lot of stuff from the pickup artist community. Um, in fact, one of the pickup approaches where he gives the lady a phone and he calls the phone, that that was going around sort of the late 90s as a way to sort of introduce yourself to a woman, you know, take two phones on a night out, get your friend to give a phone to a woman, ring it. Oh, my God, what an amazing way to start a conversation. Um, there are other ones such as go out and wear lots of cheap jewellery and then as you meet a woman, give her your bracelet and then she's going to think, oh, my God, it's a special bracelet. And then later on the night, you can find it. Like, have you got my bracelet? Really? It costs like 20p. There are all these sort yeah. of cheap, sleazy tricks to sort of attract women. But was it attraction or was it just seduction where they were sort of caught up in the moment? And they're a bit like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And then the next day they wake up like, oh, my God, what did I do? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, it, so that, that, that is like insane because so from – Obviously, a modern day, I'll say, non expert perspective. You won't give someone a phone now because it's going to cost you a grand buying an iPhone to give to someone to fucking ring them. But then, obviously, I know, like, then modern day, giving someone a bracelet now is a super like to on Tinder. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. there's a completely different premise. It's like, I'm not giving you a bracelet anymore. I just super like to on Tinder. Like, you know, you know, you like that because it means I'm interested. Like, how the world, whether it's cheesy or not, how the world has fucking changed. Like, that is insane to go from giving someone, fair enough, a 20p bracelet to super liking them on Tinder. I love it. 
Yeah, and there's a whole section, a whole chapter on the book on social media, uh, and it comes just after first impressions because all social media is, whether it's a dating app, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, is it's a platform in which you make a first impression, and it is just a first impression. And a lot of people get caught up where they run game or what they think is the courtship process through dms or through tinder and then they meet them in real life and they realize oh my god you're incredibly boring i've wasted all this time you know all that is is to get to meet them in person some people think you know i've got these 10 pictures on instagram all these people have like 10 pictures now i don't know what it is it's like they've all read the same blogs you know have just 10 pictures on instagram your best 10 pictures and then you meet the person you're like well you look nothing like that and you're incredibly boring and you don't have anything to say and what a waste of time this is. So social media is just the first impression and that's all it is. And people need yeah. to realize that social media isn't real. And I say that a lot in the book, it is just marketing. It is just a promotion website. Here I am, this is my pitch, but guess what? You've got to come and meet me and find out a bit more about me. So yeah, it didn't even exist in the pickup artist industry. None of the Tinder existed, Bumble didn't exist. Uh, plenty of fish might have existed, but I don't know if anyone uses that. So- Fucking hell, that existed with dinosaurs, that fucking thing. But no, so, <laughs> yes. no, so obviously, obviously I, I ask everyone that comes on the show, as you know, to give me a little bit about themselves, a bit of a backstory, something I might not find out about them. You went to a Catholic school. So I like, did go to a Catholic school. Yeah, you went to a Catholic school. So obviously, I'm going to stereotype, I won't lie. Obviously, now you'd expect people in this Catholic school to possibly not end up writing a book about sex and dating. Like, you won't really expect that. So how... You say that, Luke. Go on. Yeah, but Jesus said, love everyone, Callum, and that's what I'm trying to do, just that, love that everyone. Is, do you know what I mean? Think that is... What? Yeah, that is that is very, very true. But no, because obviously you've had quite a bit of stories, you know, like um, the Perla story. What's the Perla story with a girl where she was playing Perla? Got swimming goggles? Yeah. Yeah, so, so when I was at about 15, 16, um, I'm, I was talking to a girl. No, it must have been younger than that. It was on the MSN days when you spoke to someone on oh, MSN. Wow. So okay, you, yeah. didn't even, you didn't even know... Who, where they were from, you got their, their addy, you were talking to them. I was talking to this girl and we were getting on a little bit and we had webcams back then, but it was like really grainy, do you know what I mean? And I know she was like, well, on um, Saturday, I've got like a polo competition if you want to come and watch. And I was thinking, this is cool. Yeah, this sounds cool, like a, a nice little first date. So I was thinking, I'll do something nice, like I'll bring her like a gift. So I turned up with swimming goggles thinking she meant water polo and there she was on a horse. So it's safe to say she didn't need the goggles and, and she didn't see me again either, but... Yeah, but yeah, no, this, it this is what makes it perfect because, like, it's like a young romantic at heart, like an old romantic at heart. You know what I mean? Even at such a young age, it's like, yeah, I'll bring you something, fucking swimming goggles. Like, yeah, I'll bring you that. But we'll go with it. We'll go with it. But no, so the book's obviously now published. It's now written, printed, everything like that. Yeah. So what what got you to the point of writing the book? When did you actually go? I'm going to write about this stuff. I think. Um... Probably approaching 30 gives you uh, that sort of milestone, gave me a bit of time to reflect and think, you know, I was a teacher for many years and I very much enjoyed that. And I was thinking, how can I sort of combine everything I've done or learned in the last 30 years and sort of turn that to something that can be used by other people? So I thought, well, take the teaching bit. I can teach people stuff. I know that I can explain complex issues. Research, I can do that. You know, I had a first class degree. Um, I had no marketing, no public relations. Uh, I've worked in talking to people and trying to convince people of different things. So how can I sort of bring all that together? And then I thought, what's the one thing people think I'm quite good at or what they ask me? No one asked me to change a light bulb, Callum. No one ever says, Jack, come around, like, my washing machine's broke. I never get those calls, but I do get the call, like, right, there's this girl I like, and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, okay, well, ignore her for a little bit, for starters, because you, you, you like her a bit too much, and you just pull back. And they're a bit like, what? No, she, she spoke to me today. I'm like, great, well done. Like, act like you've been here before. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Calm down. So oh, that's sort of the area I feel as if I could offer the most value. And the whole book is about offering value. And that's why, before it says you know attracting women it says you must change your life and change your life for the better because 40 years ago and this is the thing i think men struggle to get their head around 40 years ago my dad's day and my granddad's day if you found a woman attractive you'd walk into the shop you'd say you look really nice can i take you out on a date she'd probably say yes because it wasn't something that happened often you go out on a date and that's how courtship would start Callum, if i walked up to a woman in the street now and said hey look you look really nice i'd end up on a tiktok i'd probably get arrested i'd be on snapchat 
uh, and you wouldn't have a chance. So yeah, the, art, the approach has changed. Yeah. Yeah, that is exactly what would happen probably in that r routine as well. Like, that just doesn't happen. No, no one speaks to people in that way. So it's about understanding indirect own openness. And there's a reason for it. And I don't blame women. I blame men over the years have developed a reputation for only talking to a woman or being nice when they want something. So is there any reason that a woman throws up what I call in the book a bit shield? Yeah. So, see, coming from... Oh, I'll tell you what, fuck it, I'm going to say it. So coming from like um, a gay man with lots of female friends and things like that, yeah, you know, a lot of the time, and I'm not saying all, at all in the slightest, I'm, re I'm really not saying that. You get a lot of them and go, oh, I want that old kind of love, I want that old kind of love, I want that old kind of romance. And I do say to them, I go, okay, but what are you going to do if someone gives you it? They go, what? I'm like, if someone comes up to you, like you just said, like old-fashioned courtship, comes up to you and says, I want to take you out on a date, like, you think they're weird because you want to, like you said earlier, you want to check them out on social media first. You don't know who they are. You know, you want to go, oh, my God, you want to, on um, Tinder or whatever, see if they're closest to you, first thing you're going to do, oh, oh, they're on Tinder. No, they're just a player trying to find everyone. If someone does that, because you've not had it as a natural culture, you're probably going to be a bit freaked out by it. Like, you kind of go, oh, what this old-fashioned love? But I want to be able to do the modern-day, you know, credential check like i want to make sure i can check you out everywhere and make sure that you're actually legit whereas it, it, you, the same the one that all type of love from a friend's point of view you know i have actually said this to friends i'm like you're saying that but when you have got the option of getting it you don't know what to do with it and that's the bit you need to understand if you if you want that old kind of love you've got to work with that old kind of love and that's just me as friendship advice to friends and it was in particular two two uh, friends that said it at the same time. Because one said, it, she went, oh, yeah, I completely agree with you. And I went, that's great. I can tell you now, you're not going to do it because you are insistent on giving everyone a background check. You, you're insistent on it. And it won't work. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit no, like that. I absolutely agree. And what you've said... What you've said kind of fits in well with how I define the mm -hmm. courtship process because I explain it as as the first stage is attraction because attraction isn't a choice. You have to be attracted mm -hmm. to someone. Um, unfortunately, if I met one of your friends and I brought along a guy who was absolutely perfect for them on paper and we wrote everything down and they're just not attracted, they're not attracted and that's how it is. So yep. after the attraction, the second phase is safety. So it is exactly what you just said. And when you build safety, it allows them to get comfortable. It allows them to do this background check, like you said, but in person, you know, because on social media, you can pretend to be anyone. You can be anyone you like on social media. That's the wonderful thing about it, isn't it? It's escapism. I can put pictures of me in a hangar somewhere. I tell you I'm going on a plane. You all believe it. Wow, look at me. I'm, I'm successful. You know, it's as yeah. easy as that. Whereas safety, as I define it, which is getting comfortable with someone and getting to know them, it, that's that's the, the bit where you're doing actually your background check. Do I feel comfortable around this person? Do I like who I am around them? Can I be myself? Can I be a bit silly around them? They're, those yeah. are the things that people really want. They, they don't care how many likes they've got on Instagram, but like you said, that's what they think they need to look for because that's all they've been shown to look for. See, I love that. So as we're getting towards the end of the show, believe it or not, we've then been talking for ages. So it's, <laughs> in the book, what can they expect in the book? So obviously, because I'm going to get you on for my podcast, I'm not going to lie. So it's, um, what can they expect in the book? If they went now, listen to this and went, actually, I think I really need to look at it. What can they expect to find in your book? So the book will take them on a journey and, and a, a lot of the, well, almost all the things in the book uh, is research based. So what I do is in, I include lots of references at the back of the book for each different section of the chapter, which quotes where the references came from, where I'm actually pulling all this information from. It's not my head. It's not my opinion. It's not, oh my God, these are all Jack's lived experiences. These are research that I think will help you in your journey to attract women and change your life. And the first two chapters, we go in a lot into the research. You understand, well, what, how have I got in this particular frame set? How, where are you, where you are now? Where do you need to be? And then from there, we literally go through the courtship process. So you'll learn how to build attraction, how to become more attractive to women. You'll learn how to make a good first impression, both in person and online. There's two different chapters on that. You'll learn how to build safety with a woman to make her feel comfortable around you. You'll learn how to close the deal uh, and closing the deal depends on whether you want a relationship or you want to have sex. Uh, there's a chapter on sex there. So that goes for all the different kinds of sex, uh, all the different types of 
female orgasm. Uh, one of the bits I'm most um, happy about are, are my diagrams. This is a diagram of the clip that many men need. Oh. So, you know, that oh. by itself. Oh, right. okay. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, there, there's lots of stuff in the book that will help you. And then afterwards, we talk about relationships. And the most important thing is the last chapter, which basically says it's a numbers game. And what I mean by that is not it's about racking up your numbers, but you are going to fail. And you've got to keep trying and keep plugging away. Yeah. If you talk about Tinder, for example, I think the the percentage of men that get a like was something like 0.1 so, oh, wow. or 1%. So less than one in 100 swipes do you actually match someone. Whereas in real life, it's much higher. So if you're only going to limit yourself to being a stud on a, a social media app, you, you're really reducing your chances. And you are going to get shot down. It, it happens. It happens to me. It probably happens to you, Callum. It happens to all of us. You can't be everyone's cup of tea. But what you can do is how you deal with rejection. And you take it personally or you say, you know what? She's probably having a really bad day. I wish her the best of luck. Oh, she looks nice. Let's go have a conversation with her instead. Uh, and, and that's the book. Oh, Jack, thank you so much. Absolutely loved it. I'm going to kick you backstage, mate. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Don't run off straight away. I'll have a quick chat with you in a minute. But honestly, absolutely love it. And everyone go buy his book because it's amazing. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> Thanks, Kellen. Thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. By the way, never met Jack before. First time I've met him today. So there you go. But look at that lovely broom in the background. I've just noticed that's there. That's really annoying that that's in the shot. Anyway, people, make sure you tune in tomorrow to the business show. I've got the one and only Mr. Darren Housley on the show. So make sure you tune in tomorrow at half nine. Other than that, make sure you catch every replay on my YouTube channel. And remember, in the words of my nana, if you can't be good, be careful. Definitely in this case, if you can't be careful, don't get caught. <laughs>